Imagine you're in a theater with me, and the fire alarm goes off. You look around, and anxiety sets in. Your neighbors do the same. Your heartbeat speeds up, and you're up for a race to the nearest exit. But it's a dirty race, in which people use their hands and elbows to push their way forward. Soon enough, there's a traffic jam at the door, which is far narrower than the room. Not everyone can make it through immediately. And you see the crowd violently pushing against each other. Research shows that a jammed crowd is strong enough to bend steel barriers and push down brick walls. In rapid evacuation events, it is not panic that kills people. It is asphyxia and lack of oxygen due to excessive crowding. It is thus vitally important to understand how people move in such an emergency in order to engineer practical solutions. But how do we allow people to leave safely? How do we describe the motion of crowd? We have a problem here, and we need a problem buster. So who are you going to call? A physicist. I'm a physicist myself, and I have always been fascinated by the ability to describe and understand the world around us. Physics is an experimental science. We get to know the natural world by noticing and observing similarities and analogies. So here is one of them. If you look at a herd of sheep moving from one pasture to another, they look quite similar to a rushing crowd. Before the constriction, the herd gets denser and sheep start pushing on each other, which leads to a possible slowdown and even blockage. And now for something completely different, we see similar dynamics at this Chinese highway in October 2015, just after a long weekend. The highway merges from 50 to 20 lanes, leading to an inevitable traffic jam at the bottleneck. So how come sheep, cars, and frightened people can be similar? The power of physics lies just here, in this little step of extracting as much as possible from a complex system by removing all its unnecessary features. By trying to find the basic mechanism at play that will allow us to understand what is really going on. But how do we create crowd physics? Let me put on my physicist's hat. Jumping back to our smoky theater room, you and I are in this crowd together, and our only aim is to escape. We want to model this event, so let's keep it very simple. All n objects in the room want to move forward in a certain direction with a certain desired speed. There are various socio-psychological forces, as you do not want to walk into the person in front of you, or even physical forces when everyone's using their elbows. You want to orient yourself towards the exit, but you need to mind your surroundings. You want to keep a velocity-dependent distance to other people and walls to avoid collisions. These all we model as interaction forces, which keep people apart from each other, even before physically touching. This, was uh, this is a model proposed by Helbing, Farkas and Vicek to understand panic dynamics. Thankfully, there is no experimental data on panic-induced evacuation, and no mad scientist has ever put a room on fire just to see people crowding at the door. Yet, the model yields fairly interesting predictions. At normal values of the desired velocity, people simply leave the room, just as you leave a cinema after a movie. No hustle. However, when you're in a rush, and your desired speed is high enough, circa 1.5 meters per second, we see the formation of arch-like blockages of the exit, when people form a bridge and push on each other, and avalanche-like bunches of people leaving the room when the arches break. These look quite similar to structures we observe in a clogged salt cellar or in a silo filled with grain. These, in turn, suggest solutions for funneling the crowd by inserting obstacles into the flow. You have surely seen entrances to concert areas being a row of narrow gates rather than one wide gate. The reason for that is they require people to break up into smaller groups and thus prevent the formation of these arches, which hinder people from leaving. So they streamline the leaving crowd, allow them to leave smoothly. 
The second conclusion is that faster is actually slower. Clogging is connected with delays. By increasing your desired speed, you can increasing your desired speed can lead to a decrease of the overall average speed of people leaving the room. No need to convince you that this can be tragic in an emergency. In the presence of fires, or if there was one in the room today, clogging can drastically reduce your own chances of survival, and this is just because you want to be really fast. The model I have shown you is simple, perhaps drastically simplistic, but as long as it gives us predictive power, it is a tool. And because it just encodes a bunch of simple rules, perhaps it can be used to understand other systems too. Have you ever seen a murmuration of starlings over a dimming sky in the evening? Composed of hundreds of individual birds, they move together as if they were parts of a huge living organism, constantly moving its arms and shifting shapes. Or a school of fish in the sea. When seen from a distance, they resemble a gigantic fish. And the very good reason for that is that such a fish is harder to attack. In both these examples, there is a great variety of form, pattern, and behavior. Yet, it turns out that to understand these patterns, only three rules are necessary. As an individual member of such a group, you want to keep your distance, you want to adapt your speed to the average speed of your neighbors, and you want to keep the pack reasonably tight by filling any gaps. Just these three, and you get to all the beautiful and complex patterns. A system with many individual players can behave like a living system in which large-scale structures are formed. Recently, two physicists made observations of some 150,000 runners at the start of the 2017 Chicago Marathon. They measured the speed and density of the runners, finding, to their amazement, density waves propagating through the system at a constant speed of circa 1.2 meters per second, even though that the runners maintained a constant average speed and density. So they merely served as a medium for these density perturbations to propagate. In the next step, researchers wanting to describe these waves adopted the same equations that we use to describe water flow. And that's how fluid dynamics of crowds was born. So how come something so beautifully intricate comes out from such simple rules. As William Hoy famously said, a cell is not a tiger, just as a single atom of gold is not yellow and gleaming. It's just more is different. Two plus two is often more than four. A system is more than a sum of its individual elements. In physics, we call this phenomenon emergence, and we see it all across the scales from atomic interactions forming molecules to water waves forming sand ripples on the beach. We have seen examples from wildly different environments. It would be insane to say that marathon runners and fish apply the same reasoning to move. Yet to me, it is absolutely magical that we can describe their dynamics using just a simple set of rules. And that's my job, finding simple insights into complicated problems trying to demystify the basic mechanism at play. We live in an increasingly complex world. In order to navigate it, we need to learn to simplify. In fact, the simplistic approach from physics has proven useful to understand and improve traffic jams management, crowd flows, logistics, stock exchange market, social networks, biological networks, and many, many more. Simple models do not have all the answers but they help us start and give us intuition. This also says that emergence and emergency have more in common than similar pronunciation. Next time you're in a social gathering, or perhaps a street protest, you might want to think about how important it is to safely dissolve the crowd or predict its motion when pressed. You might use some conclusions from the panic dynamics research I've described. But next time you're there, pay attention to rules by which large groups interact 
and by which crowds flow, you might find some really cool patterns. All you need to do is to put on your physicist's hat. <laughs>